Hey, hey, hey. Here we go. Let's have another little bit of DWJ's WW, shall we? And don't forget, if you are doing the RA, it's the HC edition. And tonight we're up to P182. <laughs> anyway, if you remember last night, we left it. They'd just, they'd realised that the table, the desk had gone. And oh my goodness, the fingerprints panic mad panic and then old helpful dan said um if the, the dogs are trained to tear people to pieces those police dogs i wonder if they'll tear brian up or just the witch dan don't think brian's a witch does he does anyone else think brian's a witch or do they all just know nan is the witch hmm they don't know what we know anyway let's pick it up from there shall we here we go Charles looked at the blister on his finger and realised that burning was not the only thing that hurt. His first thought had been to run away during break. Now he decided to go in PE next lesson. He wished there was not a whole lesson in between. That lesson seemed to last about a year, and for most of the lesson policemen were continually going past the windows with dogs on leads. Back and forth they went. Wherever Brian had gone, they seemed to be finding it hard to pick up his scent. By this time, Nan's hands were shaken so that she could hardly hold her pen. Thanks to last night, she knew exactly why Brian had left no scent. It was that double deal in broomstick. It must have flown Brian out before it came and woke her up. Nan was sure of it. She could have taken the police to the exact spot where Brian was. That was no bone fire she'd smelled over Larwood Forest last night. It had been Brian's campfire. The broomstick had brought her right over the spot and then realised its mistake. That was why it got so agitated and tried to fly away backwards. Ugh, she was so angry at Brian for getting her blamed that she wished she really could tell them where he was. But the moment she did that, she proved that she was a witch and incriminated Mr Wentworth into the bargain too. Oh, it was too bad of Brian. Nan just hoped Estelle could think of some kind of rescue before someone accused her and she started accusing Brian and Mr Wentworth. Just before the end of that lesson, the dogs must have found some kind of scent. When the girls walked round the outside of the school on their way to the girls' locker room to change for P.E., there was not a policeman or dog in sight. As the line of girls went past the shrubbery, Estelle gently took hold of Nan's arm and pulled her towards the bushes. Nan let herself be pulled. She did not know if she was more relieved or more terrified. It was a little early in the day to find seniors in the shrubbery, but even so... Surely somebody would notice. We have to go into town, Estelle whispered as they pushed among the wet bushes, to the old gatehouse. Why? Nan asked, thrusting her way after Estelle. Because, Estelle whispered over her shoulder, the lady there runs the Larwood branch of the witch's escape route. They came out into the grass beside the huge laurel bush. Nan looked from Estelle's scared face to Estelle's trim blazer and school skirt. Then she looked down at her own plump shape. Different as they were, they were both obviously in Larwood House school uniform. But if someone sees us in town, they'll report us to Miss Cadwallader. I was hoping, Estelle whispered, that you might be able to change us into some ordinary clothes. Nan realised that the only witchcraft she'd ever done was to fly that broom. She would not the least idea how you changed clothes. But Estelle was relying on her, and it really was urgent. Feeling an awful fool, Nan held out both shaken hands and said the first thing remotely like a spell that came into her head. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, out of uniform we go. There was a swirling feeling around her. Estelle was suddenly in a small snowstorm that seemed to be made of little bits of rag. Navy blue rag. Then dark rag. The rag seemed like burnt paper clinging to Estelle and hanging and clinging to Nan too. And there were they there they both were in seconds, dressed as witches in long trailing black dresses, pointed black hats and everything. Estelle clapped both hands to her mouth to stop a giggle. Nan snorted with laughter. <laughs> this won't do. Try again giggled Estelle. What do you want to wear? Nan asked. Estelle eyes shone. Riding clothes. With a red jumper, please. Nan stretched out her hands again. Now she knew she could do it. She felt quite confident. 
Aga taga raga roast, wear the clothes you want the most. The ragstorm began again. In Estelle's case, it started black and swelled very promisingly into pale brown and red. Around Nan, it seemed to be turning pink. When the snow stopped, there was Estelle, looking very trim and pretty in Jodpur's red sweater and hard hat with her legs in shiny boots, pointing at Nan with a riding crop and making helpless bursting noises. Nan looked down at herself. It seemed that the sort of clothes she wanted most was the dress she'd imagined Dulcinea Wilkes wearing to ride her broomstick round London in. She was in a shiny pink silk ball dress. The full skirt swept the wet grass. The tight pink bodice left her shoulders bare. It had blue bows up the front and lace in the sleeves. No wonder Estelle was laughing. Pink silk was definitely a mistake for someone as plump as Nan. Why pink? she wondered. Probably she'd got that idea from the school blankets. She had her hands stretched out once again when they heard Karen Grigg shouting outside the shrubbery. Estelle! Estelle, where are you? Miss Phillips wants to know where you've got to. Estelle and Nan turned and ran. Estelle's clothes were ideal for sprinting through bushes. Nan's were not. She lumbered and puffed behind Estelle and wet leaves kept showering her bare shoulders with water. Her sleeves got in her way. Her skirt wrapped round her legs and kept catching on bushes. Just at the edge of the shrubbery, the dress got stuck on a twig and tore with a loud ripping noise that Estelle whirled round in horror. Wait! panted Nan. She wrenched the pink skirt loose and tore the whole bottom part of it off. She wrapped the torn little bit of a scarf round her wet shoulders. Oh, that's better. After that, she could keep up with Estelle quite easily. They slipped through on the school drive and pelted down it and through the iron gates. Nan meant to stop and change the pink dress into something else in the road outside, but there was a man sweeping the pavement just beyond the gates. He stopped sweeping and stared at the two of them. A little further on, there were two ladies with shopping bags who stared even harder. Nan put her head down in acute embarrassment as they walked past the ladies. She had strips of torn pink silk hanging down and clinging to the pale blue stockings that seemed to have changed her socks into. Below that, she seemed to have given herself pink ballet shoes. Will you call me for my ballet class after you've had your riding lesson? She said loudly and desperately to Estelle. I might, but I'm scared of your ballet teacher, Estelle said, playing up bravely. They got past the ladies, but there were more people further down the road. The further they got into town, the more people there were. By the time they came to the shops, Nan knew she was not going to get a chance to change the pink ball dress. You look awfully pretty, really, Estelle said consolingly. No, I don't. This is like a bad dream, said Nan. In my bad dreams like that, I don't have any clothes on at all, said Estelle. At last they reached the strange red brick castle which was the old gatehouse. Estelle, looking white and nervous, led Nan up the steps and under the pointed porch. Nan pulled the large bell pull hanging outside beside the pointed front door. Then they stood under the arch and waited, more nervous than ever. For a long time they thought nobody was going to answer the door. Then, after nearly five minutes, it opened, very slowly and creaking a great deal. A very old lady stood there, leaning on a stick, looking at them in some surprise. Estelle was so very nervous by then that she stuttered, A, a, a way out in the name of Dulcinea, she said. Oh dear, said the old lady. My dears, I'm so sorry. The Inquisitors broke up the organisation here several years ago. If it wasn't for my age, I'd be in prison now. They come and check up on me every week. I daren't do a thing. They stood there and stared at her in utter dismay. The old lady saw it. If it's a real emergency, I can give you a spell. That's all I can think of. Would you like a spell? They nodded dismally. Then wait here a moment while I write it down. She left the front door open and hobbled aside to a table at one side of the dark hall. She opened a drawer in it and fumbled out some paper. She searched for a pen and she looked across at them. You know, my dears, in order not to attract attention, you really should look as if you were collecting for charity. I can pretend to be writing you a cheque. Can either of you manage collecting boxes? I can said Nan. She had almost lost her voice with fright and dismay. She had to cough. She did not dare risk saying spells, standing there on the steps of the old house up above the busy street. She simply waved a quivering hand and hoped. Instant weight bore, down, bore her hand down. 
a mighty collecting tin dangling from her arm, and another dangled from Estelle's. Each was as big as a tin of paint. Each had a huge red cross on one side and chinked loudly from their nervous trembling. That's better, said the old lady. The outsized tins did indeed make Nan and Estelle feel easier while they waited. People passing certainly looked up at them curiously, but most of them smiled when they saw the tins. And they were standing there for quite a long time, because as well as writing very slowly, the old lady kept calling across to them. Do either of you know the Portway Oaks? she called. They shook their heads. Pity, you have to go there to say this one. It's a ring of trees just below the forest. I'd better draw you a map too. She drew slowly and then she called, I don't know why they're called the oaks. Every single tree there is a beech. Later still, she called, Now, I'm writing down the way you should pronounce it. The girl still stood there. Nan was beginning to wonder if the old lady was really in league with the Inquisitors and keeping them there on purpose. When the old lady at last folded up the paper and shuffled back to the front door, There you are, my dears. I wish I could do more for you. Nan took the paper. Estelle produced a bright artificial smile. Thanks awfully. What does it do? I'm not sure, said the old lady. It's been handed down to my family for use in emergencies, but no one's ever used it before. I'm told it's very powerful. Like many old people, the old lady spoke rather too loudly. Oh. <laughs> Nan and Estelle looked nervously over their shoulders at the street below, but nobody seemed to have heard. They thanked the old lady politely, and when the front door shut, they went drearily back down the steps, lugging their huge collection tins. I suppose we'd better use it, said Estelle. We don't go back now. There endeth chapter 10. Tomorrow, whoosh, chapter 11. One question that arose from that. How long is too long to be standing at a front door? I just read on here... For a long time, they thought nobody was going to answer the door. Then nearly after five minutes, it opened. If I knock on a door and no one answers it within ten seconds, I'm out of there, mate. I don't want to be talking to anyone. How, how long is too long to be standing at a front door after you've knocked it? Five minutes? That's like an eternity. Maybe they knocked multiple times. Even so... If you're knocking that many times in five minutes, you can, oh, they ain't come after the first 27 knocks. They're not going to come now. Five minutes, Estelle and Nan. All right, here's, here's a little bit of a challenge for you. I get homework from you guys, so I'm going to give you some homework. Just go around someone's house, knock on their door, and see how long you can bear standing there for <laughs> before they answer, especially if you know they've gone out. <laughs> five minutes. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard of such nonsense? Don't really do it, shit. Sorry, it's, it's very naughty. I was watching out the window the other day. Like, I don't know whether you'll see because it's a bit bright, but just over there, there's like all those houses. I was watching two kids doing that game where they <laughs> knock, where they knock on people's doors and run away. I was like, yeah, I really know what you're up to, humbugs. They were knocking and running around this corner here. Kids, kids. Little did they know that that end house there is a holiday home. <laughs> there was no one there. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at some comments, shall we? Because we need to keep up with our comments. Oh, there's been a lot. Here we go. Let's start with myopic Mickey. How much are we willing to bet that Brian was the original note writer for the note that kicked off the whole mess, I mean? Mm -hmm. I reckon so. There's certainly a clear plan set up set up someone to take the blame for him running away and cause enough distraction via the involvement of the Inquisitor. There's also pre-existing knowledge of how that would all work via his father being a witch and the simple motive of wanting to get away and prevent anyone from easily hunting him down. You're right there, Mickey. On the increasingly likely chance that he himself is a witch, there's, there's more than enough odd happenings that could be attributed to him kicking up a stir to solidly place attention and blame someone, and blame using someone else, Nan Pilgrim. I'm wondering how many weird things that didn't register his magic really were, like our love spells, I think. Would it be out of the question that he could have spelled that one teacher to distract his own father? Were the birds his work? Why was his broom acting out? While this originally felt like an answer, I'm only left with more questions. Yeah, it's about right. Well, you've got a, you've got a reply. 
It's Melanie. Very clever. I like this line of thoughts. It is. I like it too, Melanie. Here's Mary. I like it when Mary comments. Thank you, Mr. S. Enjoying your reading as always. My pleasure, Mary. And you know that. I am a Torian bull born in... Oh, I see. I'm a Torian born in the year of the ox and married a bull. <laughs> Says it all. Well, there you go. There's a lot of bull in your house, hey? I say that with love, Mary. I say that with love. Um, Here's Nettie. Love your curiosity and your enthusiasm for learning. Deep diving into unknown stuff. Oh, you don't, you, you wouldn't even believe it, mate. The stuff that I try and do. I, I wish, like, I could just be a Nan Pilgrim. And get a collection tin in my hand. I do all sorts of stuff, like, I ask the universe for stuff. I, um, you know, I, I follow people around and pluck hairs off their heads. <laughs> I know, I don't do that. <laughs> Uh, what have you written here? Me. Conk Earthbound. What? What's Conk Earthbound? Conclusion Earthbound? Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo are Earth signs. Aquarius, Gemini and Libra are air. Pisces, Cancer and Scorpio are water. Aries, Leo and Sag are fire. Pew. You're fire, Nettie. You're fire. Here's Terry. I'm starting to enjoy the story now that they are moving away from the classroom interaction. Also... Dr. Seuss is complete. <laughs> and here's Melanie. Me too. I mean, I'm enjoying it more. Not complete then, Mel, like Dr. Seuss. I'm very impressed, Terry, that you have literally now listened to every single story on there. I think way back when I've got either some handwriting lessons or some phonics lessons on there. <laughs> that was during the first lockdown, that was. Blimey. Those, the children that I was doing that for, in the really younger classes, I, I think they've either left or are now leaving school where I work. Ooh. Anyway, um, here's Terry again. For Mr. S, first, what team are you on in Pokemon? I don't know the name of it, the blue one. It was like every single gym around here, Pokemon Go we're talking about here, people. Um, every single gym around here we used to be yellow, 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 red, yellow, 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 red, no blue. So me being me went blue. <laughs> Uh, next, my youngest heard me listening to you the other day and heard you say that someone said not to talk at the beginning of your videos. Oh, don't remind me. Those were dark days. I can't even remember what book I was reading then. They did not like me doing a talk at the start. That's why I stopped it. The kid, <laughs> the kid says to tell you that you talk as much as you want. Anyone that doesn't want to hear you needs to go somewhere else. Also, they suggest you get a Discord. That way you can converse with those of us that frequent your channel. Discord has the ability to have chat channels and voice channels when you have time to be online. Mm. I think I have Discord. Let's have a look. I do have Discord. Uh, apart from this saying welcome. Oh. I, I'm on a couple of things with Discord. I think, I think I used it when I used to play World of Warcraft, but I don't play World of Warcraft anymore because I haven't got any space, like, for my proper computer, which is sitting in my wardrobe there. And I, and I don't even have a monitor screen for it, so that's why I got this, this laptop here, you see. I got this one a few years ago for during lockdown I think or just before lockdown and this one is only one of those online ones that doesn't have any memory so um yeah but I do have discord I'll have to look into it and see how I use it here's chill mc 74 is it just me or am I the only one who has no astrology knowledge it might be just you and you might be the only one I don't know I to be honest I'm learning chill mc all right oh look, here's Terry hey chill I have very, very limited astrology knowledge myself, so no, it's not just you. No, and, and like I said, I know that, like, when I talk about that kind of stuff, I know that I'm just kind of addressing a, a little sliver of people who listen. So um, I, I won't do that. I'm not trying to alienate anybody. It's just, like, just me making my brain, like, ask questions and stuff. I won't talk about it tonight. Here's Melanie. She's saying, sharp hair, Mr. S. Really? I ain't even been to the barbers yet. I've literally just pushed it sideways like that. Look, barbers tomorrow morning. Um, nice shirt too. Thanks, Melanie. That blue is a good colour for you. I got two new shirts today as well. They're all they've all been arriving, and 
a knee jacket. I, w I won't get it now because it's downstairs because it was a bit pongy when it arrived. But, um, yeah, got a knee jacket. Congrats on your felicity. Fel 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 you good clothing, Barkins. The photo of you and... Sorry. The photo of your kids walking together is lovely and deserves a frame and a place on your bedroom wall or shelf. Yeah, it does. I love that picture. As to the story... Events are moving along in a mysterious DWJ way, and I'm liking that part. Also, that comment that went missing, the one I was having a fit over, not sure how it was possible, but you read it here. Things that make you go, hmm. things that make you go, hmm, hmm, hmm. yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I just read what I see here, mate. Just reading what I see. I don't know. I don't, maybe it didn't ever disappear. Here's, here's Nettie again. What's she saying up here? Oh, she's back on number 11 here. Oh, she's talking to Melanie. Guess I discovered the recent glitch in comments. Oh, there you go. Sort in, you have to choose newest first, not top, to see all comments under a video. So I could find your background comment. Merry meet, Melanie. Uh, there you go. There you go. Let's love how that. I love how it did. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's think. Anything else exciting that I can tell you? So. Mm, ooh. I was meant to go to work today, but I've been a bit lazy. I am, um, yeah, because I'm starting, like, one of our teachers is going to go and do some training at another school. Have I told you this? So I'm go I've got to go and be a teacher again, starting on Monday. And um, only for four weeks, because obviously I've had this week off. <laughs> you know, I'm back to school on Monday. But this half term is, what's the point? Four weeks long hardly worth going in then we get two weeks off for easter because easter is so early this year anyway um so yeah i meant to go to work today but i was lazy so i didn't but i can't really remember my point here maybe i'll go tomorrow i don't know i don't know what my point is really but tomorrow like i said i'm going for haircuts with the boys so i don't know maybe they'll love going in there i just wanted to go in and like make the classroom a little bit more me because it's a girl teacher in there at the moment and it's all like pink and wicker baskets and stuff and like smells like petals i'll go in there trump a little bit <laughs> i won't really as disgusting sorry uh what else have i been up to today read loads more of my kundalini book i was saying like the recommendation is like you read all of the stuff and then of course they always have like the kind of the practical bit at the end don't they and so i was reading that excitedly like here i go kundalini tarot astrology crystals whoop herbs <laughs> let's go um yeah you have to like meditate for a whole year on one specific chakra before moving on to the next one what that'll take me nine years Blimey. I don't know if I want Kundalini that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I ain't got anything else exciting to tell you. I'm now about to have chips for my tea. Chips are in in the UK. Chips are like the hot things that you get in newspaper. Potato fried. <laughs> um, I know chips elsewhere are crisps. <laughs> I already had some crisps because it was a wrestling main event this morning. But it was filmed in Australia in Perth. Um, Elimination Chamber, it was called. So I watched that with Floyd. But Floyd kind of lost interest. So I sat there watching it on my own, which I didn't mind. Okay, I don't think there's any more exciting gossip that I can tell you about. So I'll catch you all tomorrow. I'll probably be a bit Marty Monk and miserable tomorrow. Because obviously I'll have the, um, the Sunday Scaries, won't I?